Hello Canterbury. It is the 17th of September, Wednesday. Well, it's been a bit of a mixed bag, the weather today, hasn't it? Hey, did you hear about Lady Gaga and her relationship with Rangiora? That's right. She has 41 million Twitter followers and apparently she up uploaded and said that we should all go to Shutter Rock Rangiora Software Company website and find out about them and encouraging her Japanese followers to use the software to upload the images to her website. What an amazing, amazing endorsement, isn't it? Pretty cool. And another thing that's pretty cool is the winner from yesterday's um, question. Now, we asked you to call in or go on our Facebook page about why you should win a double pass to go to Bic Runga and uh, Neil Finn. I was going to say Liam then. That's his son. Um, now, the winner is Dorothy Gray. And you are going now because it's your 38th wedding anniversary. So congratulations to you, Dorothy. And uh, Marianne will be in touch. So the question today is, what is Neil Finn's middle name? What is his middle name? As you'll find out tomorrow. So again, simply call Marianne 03 377 or go to our Facebook page and make sure you like it. Well, coming up on today's show, um, we talk to the Musicians Club about a wonderful ball that is coming up. We head out to Rangiora Vet. But first up, this Friday is Loud Shirt Day. So any of those hideous shirts that you have in your wardrobe, this is the Friday to bring them out. And we'll talk more about Loud Shirt Day. But first up, we are very lucky to have a beautiful performance from Eve Williamson. Take it away, Eve. from 7am to 8am for an exciting range of fantastic kids programming. Join in with all the fun, Saturday mornings from 7am to 8am on CTV. Royal Cannon is a world leader in premium nutrition for cats and dogs. Sometimes due to age, genetics or following surgery, our canine and feline friends need some additional support for their joints and limbs. Royal Cannon's mobility diets are complete maintenance diets for adult dogs and cats that provide additional support for healthy joints. Visit your vet clinic to find out whether a Royal Cannon mobility diet is the right maintenance diet for your best friend. Royal Cannon, health nutrition for cats and dogs, whatever their needs. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Located at the foot of the Port Hills, Berrymead Golf offers a spectacular location for any occasion. Make a dream wedding a reality with private use of our green function room, outdoor garden courtyard, large marquee and stunning gazebo. Or for your next conference, enjoy the relaxed atmosphere of Berrymead Golf, offering a private spacious conference room with special deals to make any break a true break. All with customised catering from the WOW Cafe. Berrymead Golf, 50 Berrymead Park Drive, right next to the Berrymead Heritage Park. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs for more mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice see more mobility corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference more mobility makes. Loose Lips is a new woman-only weekly chat show made for Cantabrians where nothing is sacred and no topics are out of bounds. Loose Lips starts Thursday the 29th of May at 8.30 CTV. Do you know what? In this world, there's a lot of adults that would never, ever get in front of a camera. 
And I'll tell you what, our cameraman wouldn't get in front of a camera. A lot of people wouldn't. And beautiful Eve, who is only eight years old, made such a courageous thing by coming in front of the camera. And her nerves just got a little bit too much, but I think she did a beautiful, beautiful performance of what she did. And she's such a wonderful girl. And we'll hear more about how beautiful she is, really. And I'd like to welcome Megan Chinnery. How are you? Thank you. I'm good, thanks. That's good. Wasn't she... So brave. Oh, she was very brave. Yeah, she did a very good job. Yeah, of course she did. <laughs> so big ups to her. But um, let's talk about um, Loud Shirt Day. But first of all, quite a mouthful your title is, Megan. So <laughs> you go for it. So I'm a cochlear implant habilitationist um, and I work at the Southern Cochlear Implant Program. And on Friday is Loud Shirt Day, so that's our annual fundraiser. Um, so we work with children with cochlear implants and Loud Shirt Day raises funds so we can provide the therapy the children need um, to learn to listen and then talk when they have a cochlear implant. Um, so the funds raised cover the extra things that government funding doesn't. Mm. So at the moment we provide Skype therapy to families outside of the region so they can get the same service. Um, we're running a teen mentoring program at the moment. So we've got 18 teens from around the region um, all involved with that as well. So. so what is a cochlear implant? So a cochlear implant is a device that helps people hear. Um, the people that benefit from a cochlear implant don't get any benefit from hearing aids, so they're often quite deaf, so without a cochlear implant they wouldn't hear anything. Um, and this is what it looks like here. It's two parts. So you have an internal part that a surgeon implants. Okay, if you just want to hold um, it just up to yeah, Dave over yeah, here. Yeah, this one over here. Cool. Um, and that's the actual size of it. So that gets implanted under the skin. Wow. And then this part here is the processor that you see on the outside. Um, so they talk to each other across the skin okay. like that. You just hold it just nicely there. Thanks, yep. Megan. And so this is the processor that you can see on the outside of somebody's head. Incredible. And that's how they hear. Jeepers, isn't it? And so, okay, so the little bit's hanged in there, it looks like tentacles sort of. It does, it does. It? So and this, that goes under the skin. This whole bit goes under the skin and it sits on your head sort of about there. Jeepers. And this little part at the bottom um, is the bit that gets threaded to, in your inner ear, which is the part's called your cochlea, and then that sends impulses to your brain and that's how the kids and adults of the cochlear implant can hear. That's incredible. And this is all completed though in Canterbury, the it surgery? It is, yep. So we are based in Christchurch, um, but we service from Taranaki across to Gisborne and down to the bottom of the South Island. Um, so that's about half the population. What a huge area. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about, like for Eve. Eve has one, an implant yes, herself. Yep. So what are the first signs that you think, well, my child really does need this? Um, so Usually now children are screened at birth, um, so we find out that they've got quite a major hearing loss then, so we mm -hmm. can implant them early, um, which means learning to talk and listen is a bit easier for them, um, but they still do need quite a lot of therapy. And in Eve's case, she was born before newborn hearing screening, so her parents would have noticed that she wasn't responding to loud noises and the phone ringing and that sort of thing that other babies would awake to or notice. Wow. So it must be a new world for them when they have the implant it completed. It is, yep. So Eve was implanted when she was quite young um, and she had lots of speech and language therapy here in Christchurch. And now um, she's at a mainstream school. She's at Wairiki Road, doing really well. Her language is age equivalent. She loves to sing. She's a talented violin player. So yeah, it's really great what they can do for the children. Okay, so let's talk about Loud Shirt Day. You just touched on it briefly before, but it's being able to give these implants to children? Um, it's not the implants, it's more the therapy okay. um, related to the implants. So the implants are government funded, we're very lucky in New Zealand. Fully funded? Yes. Oh yep. brilliant. And a portion of the therapy is as well. So Loud Shirt Day is a, enables us to provide just that better service for the kids at the intensity that they need to catch them up with their language development. So how can we support so this you can Friday. go to the website, um, it's www.loudshirtday.co.nz and you can register online if you're a business or you can make a donation online um, and then on Friday wear your loudest shirt and when everyone asks you why you're wearing a funny shirt you can tell them that it's for Loud Shirt Day. Okay, well, let's talk through when you're talking about the, the therapy that's needed to go hand in hand um, with uh, the implant. What will the children experience and how long will that therapy continue for? It all depends on the child. Um, 
but the th we're with, they're with the paediatric program till they're 18 years of age, so if they do need continued support in the way of therapy, then we can keep providing it for them. Um, but if they're developing really well and there's sort of nothing else going on for them, about two years of intensive therapy is enough. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're listening and talking really well. And do you think schools are better prepared now with the deaf children? I think so, yeah. We're really lucky in New Zealand. Um, there is really great support in the education system for children with hearing loss. Um, and a lot of the children, the majority of the children on my case, are at mainstream schools and doing pretty well. So Megan, yeah. you personally your story, I mean it's one of you here as an advocate for our Loud Shirt Day. Um, what made you actually follow this as a career path? Um, I just love communication and the fact that we can help people communicate is a really special thing. Um, I get really excited to go to work in the morning, it's fantastic. And did you study locally I this? did, I studied at the University of Canterbury um, and did a Bachelor of Speech and Language Therapy. Okay, because they, they have quite a wonderful facilities there, don't they, University? And I know mm, firsthand with my mm. elder son, I went along there, but it is quite world renowned what we're doing here in Canterbury, isn't it? Yes, yeah, we've got a fantastic um, facility there and a fantastic research facility as well. Um, and a lot of cutting edge stuff comes out of there. Um, and we do have a community clinic, which means more people in the community can have access to those specialist services, um, both children and adults. If you had a magic wand, because unfortunately, and we did talk about it just quietly off camera, was that sometimes the, the funds are not, well, those that do not have the funds, you have to be really severe to get any assistance from the government. Is that still the case? It is to some extent, yeah, um, through the Ministry of Education. There is sort of, where I, the sector I'm working in at the moment is um, children with hearing loss, which is a wee bit different. Um, but speech therapy through the Ministry of Education, it does depend on what level you're at as to whether you can have service, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully things change though for the future. Yeah, hopefully. So just to recap, so for this Friday, Loud Shirt Day, so where, where can we give donations to then? Uh, the best place is on the website. Oh, okay, um, on the so website. So you can make a donation straight through the website, yep. Right. Um, or if you're a business or a community group, um, you can go on there and register. You'll then get sent a pack and some ideas of things you can do for Loud Shirt Day and there's a way of fundraising there as well. Okay. I'll put you on the spot. In five years' time, what would you like to see for Loud Shirt Day? What will we be talking about then in five years' time? Oh, I hope we can keep doing what we're doing um, and getting those children really young um, and identifying those hearing losses really quickly um, so we can try and catch up that time for the children when they're not hearing so they can then learn speech and language with their peers and be like the other children. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you want a child to have a, ch a happy childhood. Yeah, exactly. It's just normality really is, is. what you hope for them. Yeah. yeah. Whatever normal is yeah. anyway. <laughs> hey, thank you Megan and thank well you done to you and thanks for being a wonderful advocate. And also a big shout out there to the beautiful Eve Williamson. Thank you, Eve, for coming on and joining. And I'm sure all your friends at Wairaki School will give you a big hands up for it. Stay with us after the break. We talk to the Musicians Club. See you soon. The mission statement of Red and Black Sport is always to bring a voice to achievers in sport, be it Canterbury, New Zealand or internationally. We'll continue to do that here on CTV with Red and Black Sport. Don't miss it every week. Welcome to Caltex Redwood. We're a family owned business proudly supporting our local community. We're open 24 seven for fuel and shop goods and we have an amazing team of people ready to help you. Save at least six cents per litre using AA Smart Fuel Cards. We also offer great value on our LPG bottle fills. We have a full workshop and Bridgestone tyre centre. Our mechanics and tyre technicians will get your car sorted. Caltex Redwood, we're just down from St Bede's on Main North Road. Caltex Redwood, what drives you? Pastoral has the latest technology that repels rats and mice and even helps control cockroaches. Covers walls, ceilings and open spaces. Combines electromagnetic, ultrasonic and ionic technologies. Harmless to pets and people, just plug it in. Order your Pestrel rodent free today. Now $149.90 plus courier. Order within 20 minutes and get it courier free. Call 0800 88 88 44 or go to pestrel.co.nz.
Royal Cannon is a world leader in premium nutrition for cats and dogs. Sometimes due to age, genetics or following surgery, our canine and feline friends need some additional support for their joints and limbs. Royal Cannon's mobility diets are complete maintenance diets for adult dogs and cats that provide additional support for healthy joints. Visit your vet clinic to find out whether a Royal Cannon mobility diet is the right maintenance diet for your best friend. Royal Cannon, health nutrition for cats and dogs, whatever their needs. Every Saturday evening at 8 o'clock, we screen a riveting and educational documentary, ranging from history to music, culture to religion, and everything in between. Saturday night documentary, 8 o'clock, right here on CTV. It's Canterbury. Well, in Christchurch, we're very lucky because we have a fantastic musicians club that's been going for nearly half a century, can you believe? And I'm joined by the wonderfully youthful... Mary Cooper. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on today. My pleasure. The, the, now, the Musician Club really is a bit of a Canterbury entity, isn't it? It is indeed. Yes, very much. It's established over well, nearly 50 years ago. And it was in the days when uh, the bars closed very early and the musicians had nowhere to go after they finished work. So they'd come <laughs> together and uh, hang out and at uh, the place and um, jam music and just create some creative times. So it was a great venue for the musicians. So the club obviously has changed mm. over the years because uh, bars now open up, up much later and the yeah. bands play to way into the wee hours. So the club's still very strong, um, but more on a social aspect. And we hold a lot of regular um, events, um, social events, uh, workshops, um, concerts. So we are quite strong, but we're really wanting to get a lot of younger members now to take over our club legacy because mm. most of us are getting a little bit further on in years. <laughs> <laughs> More mature. More mature, More mature. and experienced. Well, I guess that's what it's all about. It's full circle, isn't it? It is, really. And I guess if you yes. want to continue on to a century, potentially, for the Musicians that's Club, right. you need that young blood. Yes. And is that what it's all about then, Mary? It's about nurturing yes, the young Yes, very talent? much so. We're seeing um, some of the... Um, uh, existing members, generations coming through now and in particular there's, there's a couple of young lads that have um, started to step up and um, ended up being full-time musicians purely from the opportunity that they've got from being involved with the with the club and the experience we're trying to help give them exposure. So that's exciting. We've still, we've got about 70 members. Oh, that's um, a decent base, isn't it? It is, but as I say, most of them need to be a bit more younger than perhaps some of them. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> now, telling us, tell us about the older musicians. I mean, have you got some names that we would know? Yes, well, yeah. you'd know Doug Corwell, of course. Oh, jeepers. Yes. yes, so he's still a member of our club. Oh, that's And wonderful. he's actually playing at our next uh, Jazz After Work event uh, this month. Um, we've um, had the late Stu Buchanan, of course, and then there's... Um, uh, Rob Carpenter, um, Wayne Allen, Des Newton, all musicians, um, Rocky Moore, there's wow. um, plenty of them that are still members of the club um, and uh, it's nice to be able to have them involved all the way through. Very much so, you can't take away from experience. And do you cover all genres of music? Yes we do, yes we do. We've had, um, um, we're having a one on this Friday week coming. We've got a bit of a bluesy band oh, put nice. together, so that's going to be a, um, a bit different. We of the young younger club members get up and do their modern music, so that's fabulous. <laughs> and, oh, you're being uh, very polite there, modern music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, it's lovely to hear the fresh sounds of yeah. the younger musicians. We really do enjoy that, and it's something we we really want to nurture through the club. Absolutely. Well, you've got a wonderful ball coming oh, up though. Yes. Let's talk about yeah. that. I know I think we've got actually got a poster about it as well. October 11th at the Cashmere Club. Tell us all about it, Mary. Right. Well, we're eventually now going to have another ball after many years of not having having some. So we decided we'd put together a nice big event. Let's get mm -hmm. the club really going. And we've got three bands. So we've got a jazz quartet called Cameo Jazz. And they'll just sort of set the scene just to get the people into the, uh, Set the mood. mood. Uh, then we've got a big band, which is Sideline uh, Swing, and they're a, a member of our club. So we've got three big bands as members of the club, as corporate members, as we call them. 
So sideline swing will then get it really lifted up with uh, <laughs> plenty of uh, power. Okay. And uh, then we've got the high rollers, which is the uh, rock and roll sort of um, good dance music band. We've got um, Des Newton, Rob Carpenter, um, Lou Mobley, uh, Kevin Taylor and a few extras going to perform. Uh, and so that's, that's going to really kick, kick on the dancing shoes then, yes, is that right? Yes, you can do anything then. <laughs> uh, so we'll have um, a good mixture of music for everyone across the, across the evening. Uh, 8 o'clock start, uh, tickets will be $30 and that will give them a supper. Oh, Mary! And uh, they will have to buy their own, um, their own drink and purchase that at club prices. So the Cashmere Club have been fabulous about uh, letting us use the room. Mm -hmm. We're going to dress it all up, um, make it look like a ball, uh, lighting, and good staging, and people can um, uh, get their tickets and book a table and we'll set them up in tables of their own group so they don't oh, have to great. be sitting with people they don't know, but hey, we no, will want to hey. have a good time. Well, you might just meet Mr Wonderful or, <laughs> you never know. or Ms Wonderful and, at the and ball. And learn to dance again. Exactly, <laughs> through their hearts. Um, so where do we buy the tickets though from um, you? Just purely through the club, uh, myself and Des Newton um, are the point of contact. Um, the, it's advertised on our website as well, um, but just by ringing us, uh, pre-purchase the tickets, we, we really want to have it um, pre-sold. Of course you do. Um, yes. So the uh, catering and things like that. Yes. So your website. Forgive me for putting on the spot because you yeah. may not know the off heart. It's, it's musicianschch.co.nz. Oh, you're on to it, Mary, aren't you? Hey, putting on this. Are you a muso? Yes. You are. Oh. So what is your instrument? Your voice um, or keyboard? Oh, okay. And I do a little bit of singing. Um, over the years, I played in bands and pub bands, so really? not so much now. Getting a bit sort of. <laughs> you sit back and take the easy track. Yeah, yeah. So, what, so what kind of music did you like? To, um, you know? We just did a lot of covers music, but I um, um, did a bit of jazz, light jazz as well. So it was fun. Great. Meet a lot of wonderful people through music. Yeah. You lot must of have a wonderful stuff. committee as well. We do. We have a very good committee. Um, longevity on the committee too, which is which is a great help. Um, and uh, it helps with the experience of the people from previous years to just keep the committee going. I've been on the committee probably 10, 11 years maybe, um, and some of them have been there many, many years, so it's great. A great thing for a family. It is a good family thing. Um, we have a very strong supporters club, which it's just evolved out of our um, jazz after work events that we hold once a month at the CPIT. Uh, jazz school and uh, so people are interested in knowing mm. what the club's doing and obviously with the way the music scene's changed in the last few years yeah. um, people are really keen to know where the jazz is or where the, the, the dance music is and, and things yeah. like that. Well I know where we can be October 11th at the Cashmere Club for the Musicians Ball you heard the website just contact and Google Missions Club seriously yes. in Canterbury. Thanks Mary all the best Great. for Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now tomorrow's show we catch up with the Platform Art Festival but now it's Rung Your Events. Have a great evening. Today at the Rangiwa Vet Centre, Rebecca is with Nick, a 10-year-old dog who has mobility problems. I'm Rebecca Waite and, um, from RVC and I'm here talking today about mobility problems in dogs. Um, this is Nick who's 10 um, and um, most a lot of dogs by her age will be starting to suffer some uh, joint pain, usually from arthritis um, and often also some back pain as well, a lot like um, older human beings as we start to wear out a little bit. Um, so Nick... Um, had uh, has arthritis in her elbows um, and um, we wanted to talk today about the sorts of signs that you might see in a dog with mobility problems um, and we what we can do to help. Um, she started off when her owner, with her owner noticing that um, she wasn't quite so keen uh, to go out on walks um, and was finding it a little bit more difficult to get up in the morning so um, she'd get out of her bed but she'd get out slowly and, it would, and she'd be a bit stiff in her front ends, um, front legs 
weeks uh, until she warmed out of it a little bit. Um, and we now recognise that in dogs, that's actually a sign that things are pretty sore. Um, we might think, oh, they just look a little bit stiff or they're a bit cold. But if they're getting up out of bed and they're taking you know, 10 or 15 minutes to get moving, that's because it hurts. Um, the same as if you've, if you've got a dog who, who limps or a um, or dog who finds it really difficult to get up steps or doesn't want to jump in the car anymore. Um, those are all signs that, that there's pain there. Um, so we'd like to think that we can now um, recognise that pain nice and early and um, use medications and supplements, physiotherapy, diet changes to really help give that dog a much, much better quality of life. They, they don't need to live um, with painful arthritis. It's, it'd be very unusual for a dog to yelp or cry or be that obvious um, than telling their owner um, that something's sore most of the time because they're such happy creatures. They'll just get on um, and, and carry on with life and, and continue being happy creatures. Um, and really, it's up to us to notice that these signs are happening um, and, um, and intervene and improve things for them. Most owners, once they start on medications or diet changes or physio, or whatever we're going to do to manage their pain, um, notice a huge difference in their dog um, wanting to play more, wanting to do things more, um, and a lot more active. And, and usually this is a result of a, a growth-related problem, like elbow dysplasia or hip dysplasia, causing the joint to wear out a little bit earlier, or an injury, a disease like a um, common one in dogs is um, cruciate ligament injury or disease that, that causes arthritis later. Mm. Those common places for, for us to see arthritic pain in dogs, and it can be anywhere, but the common places are the elbows here, um, and that's where Nick's arthritic pain is. Um, the, the stifles or knees, which are this, this joint here, that's another common one, um, and the hips, um, where the, the back leg goes <laughs> up and joins your pelvis here. Um, Nick's okay in the back end, but the front end gives you a bit of trouble, doesn't it, honey? Hey, good girl. So um, this is Nick's x-ray of her arthritic elbow. Um, this is her elbow from the side. So forearm here and down the paw would be down in this direction. Um, and this is with the elbow bent. And it's the best x-ray that we to assess arthritic changes on. And we can see that there's a lot of extra little spikes of new bone around the elbow joint at the back here. It's not nice and smooth, it's quite spiky. And also on the front here of the radial head, there's lots of little spikes of new bone. Um, and that's a reaction to that inflammation inside the joint. You can also see around this curve here, the bone looks very bright white. That's what's called sclerosis or thickening of the bone um, beneath the joint surface. And it's a definitely an, an, a sign that the cartilage is degenerating and that's a, a pretty painful joint. We're not going to be able to reverse those changes for Nick, but we can certainly um, make her a lot more comfortable by using various different medications um, and there are supplements um, and other therapies like physio and hydrotherapy that can really really help um, slow down the progression of her arthritis so that um, ideally then we can get her off medications if we're lucky. Um, some patients do need to keep taking anti-inflammatory painkillers and other various meds for, for arthritic pain but we certainly feel that it's much better that they take medication and are comfortable um, than be off medication and, um, and be sore. Um, I know there's so many humans out there that suffer from arthritis pain as well. It's certainly not something that we'd want um, our canine friends to have to suffer from. So if you think that your dog um, is showing signs of lameness, limping, um, not wanting to do as much, having trouble getting up and down in the morning or having trouble getting in and out of the car, um, take them along to your vet to see what can be done because there are lots and lots of treatment options that will give them back a really good quality of life. Join us next time when we meet Chloe, a fox terrier who injured her neck in a play fight.